Good ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. My name is Mohsen Sharifi. I'd like to thank the uh, organizing committee for the invitation. And despite my uh, efforts to the contrary, I have yet to be able to secure some conflict of interest, but it hasn't happened. Um, the talk is whether does catheter directed thrombolysis for DVT indeed uh, prevents post-thrombotic uh, post syndrome. Let's look at the data. Well, I'll be talking about initially the changes in the guidelines, the older and recent studies. They attract results that so far has been on the internet, but the actual results are still pending. Ongoing studies and my personal uh, recommendations. If you look at the chest guidelines, the new one in 2016 with the update, there were 54 recommendations in 30 statements. 20 of them were strong, but none of them was based on high quality uh, evidence. To our field, what was important was that the new oral anticoagulants are superior to warfarin for initial and long-term treatment of venous thromboembolic disease. Also, the fact that compression stockings uh, to prevent post-thrombotic syndrome was refuted. This was based on the SOX trial demonstrating no benefit of the compression stockings as far as occurrence of venous ulcers, rate of uh, uh, recurrent of venous thromboembolism. Uh, reflux, and uh, also quality of life. I tend to disagree because I've realized once the patients get the compression stockings, they actually feel better. But this is what the uh, SOX data was, and uh, based on that, in patients with acute DVT of the leg, we suggest not using compression stockings. Also, the new thing uh, was that for isolated subsegmental pulmonary embolism, Based on the patient's characteristics, you can, you, you can uh, choose to anticoagulate or not anticoagulate. As far as percutaneous endovenous intervention, or PEVI, which is a broad term, there has been a really big roller coaster changes within the last uh, uh, 9 to 10 years. Initially, in 2008, when the guidelines came out, they were very specific, saying that in selected patients less than 14 days, good life expectancy we actually suggest catheter-directed thrombolysis. In 2012, in patients with acute proximal DVD of the leg, we suggest anticoagulant therapy along, uh, alone over catheter-directed thrombolysis. And then there was some um, uh, uh, comments here that if the patient chooses not to have post-thrombotic syndrome, wants to get better, go ahead and use catheter-directed thrombolysis. And I think this was a disservice to the patients. American Heart Association's recommended intervention in phlegmasia cerulea dolens, that's very obvious, and also in cases where there was rapid thrombus extension despite anticoagulation, class 2A with level of evidence C. Uh, Society for Vascular Surgery and American Venus Forum also echoed the 2008 uh, recommendations for acute DVT, low risk of bleeding, that intervention uh, be considered. Same for Society for Interventional uh, Radiology in their guidelines in 2009. But what do we know about the natural history of iliofemoral DVT? We know there is venous ulceration up to 15%. Venous claudication can occur in a high number of patients. Venus, so is venous insufficiency and post thrombotic syndrome around 50%. The goals of treatment uh, are a lot, and we have not been able to show that we can be successful with intervention in all of them. DVT expansion we know can happen, decrease in pulmonary embolism and subsequent early mortality, reduction of PTS, reduction of chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, better quality of life, venous patency, less reflux, less long-term recurrence of venous thromboembolic disease, and less long-term mortality. The data about PTS is clear from the past. We know anywhere between 23 to 50% uh, PTS happens in uh, two years. This is based on more older data. As far as reduction of post-thrombotic syndrome uh, with different formats, streptokinase, surgical thrombectomy, TPA, there has been a relative risk reduction around 40 to 60%. Of smaller randomized trials, th this is the older data uh, uh, published from 69 to the early 2000. Out of 668 patients, uh, rather acute presentation, 
they had the uh, above calf DVT. They looked at early. Early was up to one month and late. This is really not late, but up to six months. Uh, and they looked at patients receiving streptokinase, urokinase, and TPA. The summary of the results was uh, clot lysis was better. PTS was shown to be reduced. Venous patency at least early stage was better at the risk of higher risk of bleeding. A more recent meta-analysis uh, of select uh, uh, papers demonstrated across the board post-thrombotic syndrome was less, venous reflux was re- less, and venous obstruction was less. In our uh, data, the torpedo trial, uh, at both six months and at 30 months, recurrence of VTE was less, and post-thrombotic syndrome was less. We had a separate definition than the Vialta score, so that was one criticism to us. Also, the secondary uh, um, endpoints, bleeding, was not significant, hospital stay was far less, and the patients actually felt a lot better. In the CAVINT data, the CAVINT was uh, uh, reported six months, 24 months, and five-year data. Uh, recurrence of VT in the six months was not reported. At, t- at two years, it was not significant, but PTS initially was not significant. At two years, was quite significant. At five years, PTS was significantly different, but in both groups they had a high number of PTS, and we can get that at a later stage. Uh, reflux was also less, uh, but iliofemoral patency did not show uh, much of a difference. So there were some conflicting results between the early findings and the late findings. Um, it's written here, but again, in PTS was shown to be um, reduced at five years. A number to treat for, uh, at five years was only four. Why was there a modest benefit? Because they didn't do intervention for five days. They sat on patients, watching them before they embarked on intervention. Uh, They withheld anticoagulation for eight hours, and until the INR dropped to less than 1.5. You really don't need to let the INR drop when doing venous interventions. Their TPA dose was less, and their PTT was uh, kept at up to 1.7 of the baseline. The track data, it hasn't been uh, formally published, but it was presented in the Society for Interventional Radiology in 2017. Uh, It compared the standard anticoagulation plus anticoagulation and endovenous intervention. It was to address PTS, quality of light, cost effectiveness, effectiveness, and uh, uh, symptomatic relief. Uh, 60% of the patients were male. They were rather young patients. However, 25% had previous VTE, and 57% of them had iliofemoral DVT. In the interventional group, bleeding was higher. Uh, Leg pain was less. Leg swelling uh, was less, and there was no major bleeding in both groups. If you look at the recurrence of VTE, it was uh, non-significant in both groups. The binary PTS was non-significant, and uh, Dr. Azavi was a member there, and he can probably argue about this. But what was significant was that moderate to severe PTS in the iliofemoral DVT um, uh, was, uh, was best with the interventional group, and it was driven by those who had the, actually the iliac component. The ones who had the femoral component, no significant difference was noted. So, Intervention did not prevent occurrence of binary PTS, but there is a difference between somebody has a Vialta score of 5 and somebody has a Vialta score of 13. You can't put them in the same bag. Uh, And one of the experts said overall the results of the study were disappointing and would probably have a negative influence on the guidelines. I think it would be misinterpreted, but we have to wait for the um, actual uh, data to come. So no matter what the guidelines say, if somebody has, presents with this kind of acute iliofemoral DVT, the entire ilio, uh, iliac ve- uh, venous system, femoral venous system, and inferior vena cava on bo- uh, bilaterally um, is uh, occluded, no matter how much anticoagulation you pour into this patient, this patient is not going to get better. So we really have to use our common sense as well. What about ultrasound, ultrasound assisted versus conventional catheter directed thrombolysis in a small randomized trial did not show any benefit. Um, Again, comparison between the two in the uh, 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 peripheral circulation is low. 
uh, it's not extensively written. There is another trial ongoing access PTS in the chronic uh, DVT um, uh, patients. There's also a Dutch CAVA trial which is ongoing. 180 patients have been randomized. This is for acute DVT and the results would prob the study would finish in December and hopefully it would shed more light on this concept. Again, like any other thing, the impact of institutional volume on the outcomes of catheter-directed thrombolysis is important. This is obviously common sense. In my view, moderate to severe symptoms uh, of, uh, with iliac involvement should be considered for intervention. Severe symptoms of the femoral should also be considered. I personally use the popliteal approach. I do not extend catheter-directed thrombolysis to more than 24 hours because if it's something to dissolve, it would dissolve by that time. Uh, furthering uh, administration of lytics would probably increase your um, complications. I use maintenance dose of new oral anticoagulants, early ambulation, and early discharge. So as Schopenhauer said, all truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. And third, it is accepted as self-evident. Thank you.